you by BowlersMart.com, trusted by bowlers around the world since 2004. By Lightning Strikes Bowl, home of Bowlers Mart Pro Shop. By Platinum Ford, drive the difference. By Fire Lake Bowling Center, 24 state-of-the-art lanes. By True Grit Coatings, drive on our passion. By Row to Grip, king of them all. By 900 Global, striking worldwide. Good morning, and uh, welcome back to the Beef and Barnsey Show. Uh, glad to finally be joining my partner and, uh, you know, the man of the hour. So, the unimitable Stuart Williams. How are you this morning, Beef Stew? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, pretty good. I'm watching the um, the round robin that we've got this year. I don't know why it's a round robin this year and it wasn't last year and whatever. The World Championships is a bit strange, but whatever. They've got the round robin. They're bowling. Of course, bowling's been off in the main bay for, what, five five days maybe? I think it's about five days. So it's just interesting because we bowled on this pattern for the PBA League. Yeah. And there was a couple of different ways you could play it. Like our team felt like it wasn't that bad to hook it. Uh -huh. Didn't really work out that well for us. But in the end, <laughs> the team that kicked our ass Hook the shit out of it too. But huh. the world championship pattern traditionally has been <clears throat> mainly a urethane uh, fest the last probably three or four years, this Earl Anthony pattern. Well, Russo's in reactive. EJ is about two arrows left of everybody else, and he's striking this game. He's got the front six this game. It's just... They're gonna get real messy on the on the right by the looks of it because the right handers are playing e everywhere. So you know, Pongolini's playing fifteen to eight. EJ and mm -hmm. Zach are against the ball return on the right lane. Like Zach's last shot just went over twenty five, and it's only game three. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's gonna be interesting Yay. to see. Feel like feel like the lefties are probably going to eat them up pretty good. Um, EJ might survive. I imagine Belmo will find a solution, but Belmo's like significantly further right. Mikey Schleback looks like he's hooking his urethane ball. So yeah, like there I say, here, here, there, and everywhere. All right, let's uh, let's briefly have a chat about um, what happened where you are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I went down to Louisville to watch collegiate nationals, and uh, the the singles portion happened. Uh, let's see when I get here Monday night, so it happened Tuesday and then Wednesday morning. And uh, uh, Ryan was able to. Uh, he didn't bowl particularly great in the seeding round, uh, but we did try. The goal was really to learn more than not. Uh, unfortunately, at the end, he fell out of a bye, but as often happens in that. Uh, he just missed one of the top eight buys. He ended up getting a a first round match where he was a pretty considerable favorite, but shot 160 the first game, and uh, was fortunate the other guy turned 240 into 190, and uh, then he shot, figured some stuff out, and shot 520 to make it through that match. Then shot 710 or again, and then on a much tougher pair, shot 620 and won by 60 or 70. Uh, and so, uh, made the TV show for the singles. That's the, uh, the short story long. And, uh, so he'll bowl on that Saturday afternoon. <laughs> and, uh, right now they're bowling the seeding round for, uh, the team event, 24 Baker games of seeding and four game blocks, two games on a lane and a move. And it's a mess. Uh, the singles, the singles part, uh, yes, it was actually. Uh, internet in hotels is sketchy. I was going to try and do it from the bowl, but can't even get on the internet there. And then I got here and slightly better. Um, but uh, yeah, you're pretty clear. Yeah, Adam, I appreciate it. So now they are, uh, they bowled on basically last year's Masters pattern for the singles, the 44 foot uh, with the overcliff on the gutter. And now they they're basically bowling on. The six-year-ago Masters pattern, if I was going to guess, 39 feet, 
lots of friction in the middle of the lane, and uh, Spencer's missed twice. So they used that um, pattern for when they won the team last year, right? For the yeah, the one they used for the singles this year. Right, I would say it's a hybrid. Or, it probably is something. That... Yeah, yeah, it's close. It was close enough. You know, different surface HPL and some other stuff, but. I would guess it was fairly similar. So that's a nice leave. Three, six, eight, ten. Whoa. So, so <clears throat> Wow Watosa was quite famous for that. Martin left the uh the the, the three eight ten um and a three eight combination twice in the same World Series. Uh Don Nico I says congrats that. to Ryan. Yeah, thanks, Nico. Morning, guys. Morning. Morning. We've been doing a very shitty job of keeping up with the uh, show, so we apologize. Um, yeah, it's yeah. been a mess there. Um, Frankie has kind of dug in quite a bit on the full roller layouts. He's sort of, he's actually done a couple of um, uh, pins um, somewhat in the middle of his grip. Not Rico, because it wasn't right in the center of his palm. Just kind of like right. that, sort of like, um, you know, up and down type of thing. Uh, so, yeah, um, he's messing around with it. He's kind of using the full roller layouts as his pin down balls. Um, kind of, mm -hmm. that's kind of his thoughts behind it um, to give him some different shapes. Um, morning, Clifton. Morning, gents. Thoughts on my 20-year prodigy guide through like two bad shots the whole. Yeah. Yeah. Dio I was very impressive. We spoke, I spoke about that on Tuesday. Um, yeah, he did very well. EJ last night bowled a hell of a TV show. Um, controlled the pocket the whole time. Basically took the smoother ball and just said. This is cool, but I'm better than you, and I'm going to hit the pocket every time. Um, <laughs> the other guys, that's what you can do when you got a lot of rev rate. Yeah. Um, Shota, um, he he obviously was a little uncomfortable. I be interested to chat with the ball reps over kind of why he got into the ball he got into. Um. He basically used an attention start almost the whole time qualifying. Um, mm -hmm. I think that using that slightly weaker ball, uh, symmetrical ball, um, just got him into a a spot where he got the over under that he didn't really have before. So Shota likes using a lot of speed. Um, so yeah, it'd be interesting to chat about that. <laughs> he actually hasn't ah, been using it quite as much. Um, yeah, he hasn't been using it quite as much this year. But uh, yeah, he's used that pride ball quite a lot um, when he's wanted to kind of control it. EJ hasn't been using a lot of angle. That's what surprised me about the World Championships because he's, you know, really in there, like really curving it. And he hasn't really been doing that the whole year. So... Yeah, interesting, to say the least. Uh, 258 yeah. for EJ, so ho-hum. Um, did you get to watch any of the shows? <laughs> I got to watch uh, the middle one. Uh, no, I didn't get to see the middle one. I got to see the first one. I got to see uh, Dio's show more than, yeah. so, than any of them. Uh, so the um, been, yes, basically... Right. Um, Scorpion, um, Balmo got a couple of bad breaks and didn't get through the first game and kind of, that would have been an interesting show. I think if he'd have got through the first game, because obviously there was going to be more transition on the left than there was on the right. Um, Russo ended up winning. I think most people felt like the highlight of the shows was the match between Kevin and Packy. They kind of had a bit of a back and forth. Uh, they were trying to hype the crowd up. 
Um, at one point, Packy threw a double in the eighth and stood on his chair. Thought that was a little strong in the eighth frame. But uh, yeah, they, 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 they were having a good time with it. Um, ended up meaning, I think Kevin needed a, uh, I think he probably needed all three in a tenth for a tie. I, I can't 100% remember exactly how it went down. But Kevin needed something in the tenth and he ended up leaving the three pin. Um, Packy then experienced what we experienced, which was transition. Um, <laughs> it's always were, interesting when you get that many on the show because the transition does happen faster on the show, almost always. Yeah. and uh, But rarely, and certainly not this year, uh, in all yeah. fairness to them, they have not had many lefties on any show. So. Yeah. They were uh, also only Jasper used urethane. Um, Kevin was using, I think, the sensor um uh Packy was using that new infinite um you know the buzz light year ball mm -hmm. infinity and beyond or whatever the fuck it's infinity. called beyond infinity and um and then and and then russo ended up winning uh um, yeah so um russo um came in and of course Packy didn't realize he was about to go into transition. Um, and Russo gets the 10 shots or whatever. So Russo pretty much like had the pocket controlled. And then it started off and you thought it was going to be, um, to quote Jim Ross from the uh, wrestling, a slobber knocker. And then it kind of around when the commercial break would have been, because of course in the title match, they don't have a commercial break. But around when it would have been, um, Packy, like, he had a split and then he missed a spare and it kind of just became a bit of a damp squib. Um, the match. Uh, um, yeah. So, yeah, it, 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 kind, it kind of was what it was. Um, oh. Hey, Stu. Yeah. When will the I bowl like but we still win shirts be published? Love that quote. No, it wasn't but we still win, but we actually gotta win. <laughs> I bowl like shit and we win. I bowl well and we lose. <laughs> yeah, it could be a league shirt, that's for sure. I think I need to <laughs> stop streaming this because this isn't doing very well. So, yeah. I don't know whether they're being sarcastic or not. Showed to pick up the 2810 twice in qualifying. That's insane. Again, he's played a lottery. There was no lottery. That was, he's, he aced both of them. Two into the 10, into the eight. I mean, what's sick about that is it was on the same lane and he changed mm -hmm. ball for the second one for the spare. <laughs> He's like, it wasn't the ball, bro. Uh, yeah. That that was the most sick part about that. He like, <laughs> he made it, and then he left it with a different ball. He's just like, well, I just used the ball I'm using, and then yeah. nutted it again. That was, that was pretty lucky to make the two eight ten twice in the same game. Larry says, I've always wondered, should the incoming bowler get fewer practice shots, maybe two and three on each lane? Why? Because the higher seed should have more of a disadvantage? Keep in mind, these are one-game matches on TV that you see, and I guess it's the important part when you're watching at home. But as a longtime player, the 40 games that lead up to that, 20 games, whatever it is, you've earned some right to have some advantage. It took us a long time to get to where – the leader at least gets quite a few shots on the pair, which then maybe gives them a frame or two at the beginning of the game. It doesn't always work out that way, but. And also to be fair, there's not necessarily a, um, like if I'm bowling Chris, we're not necessarily bowling the same part of the lane. So it doesn't necessarily affect Chris very much. Like, yeah. It might have happened in the Packy match because Russo is usually going to be left of Packy because he throws it so much slower. Yeah. And also, I think that Russo likes playing quite a bit of shape. 
Um, yeah, yeah, inherently, he's kind of a, I guess I would say a version of Albie as far as his, although he's getting better at playing straighter, uh, you know, for a while, that basically the slow loop was his thing. I think yeah. that, ironically, I think taking his thumb out of it's actually let him get a little more speed. Yeah. I say he used uh, to shoot spares. Well, he does shoot spares without his thumb in it, even though he threw strikes with it in. And so yeah. I do think his, like uh, the last 100% of all the guys have taken their thumb out that are two-handed, he has also improved. The uh, only one who actually did improve and then has gone backwards has been Maldi. Hmm. I don't think it's ended up being good for Maldi. He was really good for a while. Yeah. He won. He's really, he's really struggling at the minute. Oh, yeah. Wesley Lowe. Wesley Lowe is the one. He went back. He put his thumb back in it. Um, to be because, fair, it didn't change the results either way. Uh, Putting his thumb back in hasn't made it any better. <laughs> it, 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 and I like Wesley. He, he's well, actually 70th, the ball. 70th is still 70th. Yeah, he's actually getting the ball online now. He was all over the place with his thumb out of it. Now, when he puts his thumb in, he gets steeper and it just slams it into the front of the lane. He might miss his target more with his thumb out, but he yeah. he can't slam it down in the front as much with it with it out, in my opinion. But we'll agree to disagree. Moving on. Troy Lent. Back from the surgery. But but Real quick on the Wesley thing, I think that it doesn't matter which one he does if he doesn't practice. You would think he'd be at the B three performance center. He had all the access to practice he wants, and he doesn't take he doesn't take advantage of it. Yeah, That's I don't I'm know saying. that that way one way or the other. But no, no, I was talking to Calderon about it. Nah. <laughs> well, uh, and of course he's with Cortez, who's a practice maniac. So yeah. <laughs> Um, always thought the number one seed should lose twice, but no one has agreed. Well, the fact of the matter is at the Masters, I agree because it's a double elimination format, but otherwise, and, and think, then you have the same problem is you have a fixed TV time slot. We don't have that kind of juice to just say, oh, I think, I think even tennis is running into the problem. Like they, their match could last three and a half hours or it could last two. And, and now they don't get windows like that anymore. And maybe that's contributed. I don't know. But we certainly don't have the juice. We have a fixed time slot, and we have to fit it in where we can fit it in. Yeah, I mean, for me, if you're going to do it, I think the majors would make sense when we bowl, like, you know, 50, 50 or 60 games. Um, I don't think – effectively, you're the number one seed off 15 games on this thing. Because the other person won just as many matches as you won. You haven't right. beaten them. You just beat them in a qualifying block. So um I, I think the in 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 this current one, um I don't think it makes any sense in that format. I also think it doesn't really make any sense as making it five. But that's just I'd like to see best of sevens. Is that what you mean? No, I mean, five people making the show. I understand oh. how we have the time, we have to fill it, but it's just a very odd scenario. History. <laughs> Where if this guy loses that match, I'm in, but if that guy loses that match, I'm out. Like, it, it, yeah, it's yeah. just, I, I'm not really a fan of that one. I know that you guys do it on the senior tour kind of thing. And it's, yeah, it's a way just to fill the traditional five slots. <clears throat> yeah. To say it's almost the worst thing ever for you because every time you're the number one seed, you always lose the first round or win both. <laughs> so it's like it's supposed to be something that makes you relax, but in but for you, it just makes you bowl like an asshole the first round, <laughs> or you just dominate both matches and win. It's like I, I don't think you've actually benefited from that format at all. I don't think you've no. ever been the lucky loser. Two, two years ago, the only three shows I missed, I was the leader all three times and I lost the first match. When That's I had to win one to make the show. So, like, you know, I mean, theoretically, it's supposed to be it. helpful. Yeah, I <laughs> haven't seen it be helpful to you one time yet. So, not I as mean, much for me as maybe some other people, but yeah. Well, I've been on the right side of it a couple of times. It's all right. It all exactly. evens out, right? 
No, I just I, I just think Patrick Dombrowski. How are you? What's that, guys? And he's this generation's Lenny Barash. All he does is just he just makes checks. Did you um did you know it's the um the <laughs> The, the um the way that the points is going and how literally everybody we don't want to do well is doing well. <laughs> yeah, everybody behind us was left-handed. Now they're all in. So I mean, yeah, it's uh, yeah, yeah. I think it's amazing for as bad for as bad as it's been on the left. There's going to be like ten guys make the top forty-three. There's only about thirteen of them bowling. It's uh, it's all perspective, I guess. Didn't Chris win from the lucky loser spot in the world championship? We didn't do, we did round robin there. I just qualified there. So, fuck you, Don. I just went Don mode on him. <laughs> no, you made your four pins. Hey, career we're, maker. We're, we're, hey, Don is a career maker. He made John Gaines' his career I, in, in the I hope. business. I was about to say, I hope that Dan's coming to uh, Hess's um, Hess's Hall of Fame thing. There should be a I mean, thank you in there. He's almost as responsible for it as, you know, Chris is. <laughs> um, hey, Chris, what's going on? It's almost funny. Um, it says, Nationals this weekend bringing just four purple spare ball, rev dominant two-hander, 15 miles an hour on the monitor. Any advice for two other balls? Um, hmm. I would bring something that looks like a decent call. Um, I was about to say, I would bring something that's in the range of idle phase two type ball. Because if you're rev dominant, I think that will be strong enough, you know, for as much as you need. And then I would bring something that was a little quicker than that so maybe something in the range of a vivo or a zen maybe um yeah as rev dominant i'm not sure you want anything more asim but uh uh, uh let's see I mean, IQ tours at nationals have been successful in the past. Uh, just trying to think more medium balls. Uh, I think both patterns hook a little bit. There's not, it, it's not hard to get it to hook necessarily. It's way more about controlling the hook that's there. I mean, a road might be okay. Yeah. Um, like, let's have a look. Um, TNT infused. Um, like I, I just think like kind of a Zengo label. I don't think it'd be hor horrendous. An exponent pearl, sublime. Yeah, exponent pearl or or solid. Um, lately, I've actually put a little surface on the pearl, and I've had some polish to the solid, and it's. It's really made the solid where I thought it was really good on league, but not so good on patterns. It's actually made it way better on patterns now. So uh became a usable thing last week. Of course, they were also a little easier last week. But uh, I was about uh, to say, all, it felt like almost everything was usable last week. True. Uh, I mean, it, like, it not, separate itself for me a touch. I, I mean, to me, it was all about getting the ball – uh, to go through the pins. The the only uh -huh. thing I would say, Chris, is um, this year, the singles doesn't look like it's breaking down as much as it's done in the past. And I would always want something like a high road pearl type ball for me mm -hmm. um, for late on, because I felt like you always ended up playing a pretty big angle. Right. Um, but the people who have been actually quite successful on the singles and doubles. It looks like it was a little bit more like in Syracuse, uh, where it looks like the longer pattern is out for singles and doubles. Certainly the heavier volume pattern. Um, yeah, it held up playing, a little bit more for sure. People are playing a little straighter and then not really needing to. I mean, you saw Mitch Beasley's group. They were way left, but like just in general, 
the people, the most of the big scores that we're seeing, the guys are closer to third arrow than they are to fifth arrow at the end. Starting in for the right and able to stay there a long time. Yeah. So yeah. Um, it seems like team this year is a bitch. Um, like I think there's been one like 750 shot. Like yeah, I, I would say it's way over. closer to doubles and singles from last year, with except that there's hook on the gutter. Yeah. So if you can play out a little bit, then lanes break. To, you know, you, I think you can stretch them just a little bit and then uh, and then stay there. But if you go to the middle lane early, they're just flat. And they look hard. Um, well, I did make the villages show. Yes, I and you know, I lost the first match, so that didn't work out too good for me. Wow. Oh. You got some TV time. There you go. Yeah. Um, huh. Oh, that's that's the one we just looked at. Yeah, that's. I was just going oh. back to see if there's anything else, but uh, uh, <clears throat> it does tie up a little bit into this next one. Uh, guys like Bomo and Yes for making the tour dynamics work. Seems like I see them, but they don't really look amazing. Or if it's a layout trick. Well, those two guys both have one has the highest rev rate on tour. And the other one has the highest rev rate with touch on tour. So, and to be fair, I didn't think Belmos looked great at the Masters. It felt like it was a little weak for what he was using it on. So I was, uh, I was just laughing about uh, last night when we were at League. So the narrative is that Belmo hasn't been very good this season. That's <laughs> the narrative, right? Yeah. And I, I would think that that was fair. Like, I don't think he's been, like, I think he's been a little off, right? So, how about this for a run? So, he finishes 24th at the players, which was weird, but whatever. Because he made the round robin and was last. Then he went 3rd, 7th, 11th, 8th, 3rd, 2nd, 9th, 5th, the next 7 or 8 events. <laughs> and His off season was just yeah. 8 top 10s in a row. Yeah, and then the Shark, he finished 76th. And now the World Championships, he's going to finish it in the top five, probably. Yeah. So I was like, I, I get it. He's literally only not cashed in the Shark the entire season. So I, I get it. But at the same time, it's like, well, yeah. <laughs> For an off season, he's like averaging two twenty eight. He's got a hundred thousand dollars plus, and he's like, yeah. what would you say, like seven top tens? Yeah, okay. Yeah, tour dynamics is another option for those rev dominant players. Uh, going back to uh, uh, Chris's uh, question there, but it it is it is a somewhat limited ball as far as shape wise. And if you're taking a purple already, I don't necessarily think you need. Yeah. I this agree. one as well. So uh, I would skew towards even a hustle if you wanted something lower flare that but had more shape. Uh, yeah, hustle rip has been a, a, a favorite. Hustle, um, interestingly, from what we've seen, um, the hustle M and M, even though it's pearl, and the hustle rip <laughs> is solid. The hustle yeah. rip is significantly earlier than the hustle. Sorry, the hustle M and M is significantly earlier than the hustle rip. Right, like it's much more roll rolly, a little us. smoother and and stronger yeah. in the mid lane than the rip is a little longer and flippier for sure. My take on the tour dynamics is you have to kind of drill it really strong if you're a normal person, like because yeah. it really doesn't flare a lot and there isn't really many ways of putting a lot of flare in it because it's. It is asymmetrical, but the, the asymmetry isn't very strong. Yeah. And the cover is very smooth. It's not quite as quick as an IQ Tour, even though I think they have kind of similar covers. It's it supposed just to be, but yeah, it's smoother and... Yeah. So yes. I think that for me, the Tour Dynamics is a very um, limited Niche. ball for my... For, for, well, for my... <laughs> combination and i think really yeah. for chris's combination also chris might like it a little more than i do because he he kind of wants to use those lower flaring balls but just in general i think that we're both fairly medium for both like we might both be a little speed dominant and 
when I'm not speed dominant, I'm really playing in the oil. <laughs> I don't tend to throw it slow in the dry. And I think that yeah. that's where the tour dynamic. I want to like it. I agree. I have not been able to find much use for it. It's no. it's just too small a percentage of when it's the right play. So I, I will uh, say when Balmo has been using it, mo uh, quite often it's been shiny. Yeah, he's trying to get it a little further down the land so he can be a little softer speed wise and use his touch. Yeah. Uh, John Perez in the chat. Good to see you, amigo. Uh, let's see. Are string pins going to take over the sport? Uh, it's likely they will. And the uh, string pins are horrible. I, I think there's a couple of different versions out there. I'm not all in on the strings. I'm going to bowl a tournament in Florida here in about two and a half weeks on them. And uh, I'll get back to you with my take on a certified version. But yeah, what I, I've only seen the certifieds and they don't look awful. Uh, so I, I think it's like twister pins. Yes, it's probably a little different, but I don't think it's going to change the root of the game. Every time I get a bad break, this is my new thing now. Every time I get a bad break on uh, on wood pins, I go, that wouldn't have happened on strings. <laughs> I've heard this. It did make me laugh when you said it at the World Series. Literally, uh, Isaac, every big time. Head PSB plastic ball champion, that's Brian Zysik. Different one. Yeah, it's his brother. Um, yeah. uh, like I say... Every time someone wraps, you know, like the the washout or the or the or the two ten, I go, wouldn't happen on strings that. Uh, I I do have to ask you, will that go away? Genuinely though, what's will that? the wrap go away? The wrap? Yeah, you know, like when you wrap the washout, will that go away with strings? I don't, I don't know. Understand. That's one of the things I just haven't bowled on enough myself to know. I do There's, believe with the longer strings. Or the shorter, you know, the the controlled length strings that some of that stuff goes away where it, it doesn't topple it. Oh, that's but disappointing. I, I haven't seen it myself, so I don't know. I was about to say, uh, if if they could take the wrap out of the game, that that <laughs> that would almost make it worthwhile because it's the biggest load of horseshit in the whole world. <laughs> like I hate it. I hate it more than anything on earth. When you absolutely think you've drilled the washout and Taste then there's the just washout. that yeah just you're waiting for the sound of the 10 pin getting drilled and there's just like it's like there's been a death in the family because it's just like everybody goes quiet because it goes around it and you leave it and you're just like fuck <laughs> yeah uh <laughs> that morning guys just just a topic what do you think of they banned urethane from pva competition you think it would even up the playing field again uh, I think making them all legal somewhat even out the playing field again, period. Uh, I said, I said this before, I think the USBC rule before made a lot of sense. Uh, when we were all under the belief that balls stayed at the same uh, hardness at manufacturer as they did later on. Uh, now that USBC has proven that is not the case. Uh I think the PBA role makes way more sense. And watching the two up against each other, it's somewhat of a joke how much different they are. And I just think it's time for USBC to update an antiquated rule based off their own data. That's all. And I think at some point they will because, you know, there is bowling people. There's a lot of bowling people involved. And when they do that, then it is somewhat evened out without taking away a tool that some people basically use near exclusively, which I don't think is particularly fair either one way or the other, whatever fair means. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, uh, really. here. no. Do you guys get national tour points of all regionals? No, we do not. Uh, they don't even get points if they bowl PTQs, which is, somewhat up for debate whether they should or not uh um this is actually a really good question and it it, it goes to my why i think that 
uh, typical house shot is such a antiquated phrase. <laughs> um, no, there isn't a standard oil pattern for league. Like it's a little different everywhere, and it might be a little different. Um, like it, in in our center, we have um, there there has been different patterns for like a Tuesday night and a Thursday night, just because the standard of the league is different. You know, it's more players, less players, more rev rate and stuff. So um, there isn't really a, a standard pattern for league. It is different in every place because think about lane conditions relative to the, um, the condition of the, the lanes. Um, everywhere the surface is different. So that, that makes, that makes the lane condition different. So you could lay the same lane condition down in, in like Thunderball would be fun. you, They've got three <laughs> different lane surfaces in Thunderbolt. If they ran a league that ran all the way through the arena bay, the main bay, and then their cosmic bay or whatever they call it at the far end. Yeah. That would be wild, the difference. <laughs> it, it would not be particularly close. And everybody would say, you didn't do them the same in here as you did them over there. Well, we actually literally did them exactly the same. It's yeah. just the lane Some of the league shows the same thing where you, you – Bowl in one center on this pattern, then you take it to another center. It, <laughs> yeah, it can be well, pretty, pretty use, stunning how different it is. I was about to say they also use different oiling technology as well. Well, a couple and, of them, yes, also did that. But uh, yeah, uh, Dombrowski thinks fate for any of those to still have that one. That's a ball that can be used uh, and will be used by him at nationals, undoubtedly, along with a rip and probably a tropical. But uh, and he'll probably beat most of us. And uh, none of us will have any of those balls anymore. But uh. I mean, that's a fair point. Yeah. Okay. I I'll be honest. I'm not sure I washed out. I th oh no, I did. I did because I I yeah. I think I washed out about twice or three times, and I think two of them were on the same lane. <laughs> um, at the World Series, they didn't get very challenging. Yeah, I had a little more trouble with that than you did with the. I was fighting the front friction a little bit more. I busted yeah. through it a few times. I did not make very many of them there. Wow. Ugly. Uh, I don't know what this is. Belmo's rule questioning a tactic or an actual misunderstanding? What? Yeah, I think it was an actual misunderstanding. So basically, um, it's kind of a little weird. It used to be that you had, in Belmo's mind, you had until the ball came out the shot clock didn't start till the ball came out on the right lane. And if you touched your ball, it didn't make any difference. Right. Like it was until that ball came out, but Belmo was going through his routine. And he looked up and he had seven seconds left. Yeah. And he's like, what's going oh, on? Okay. So he called a timeout and he asked Tony to clarify, but the ball hadn't come out. And Tony said, but the lane was ready for you. So it's irrelevant. <laughs> Yeah, but if he it, waits, it's been talked about, and it'll be adjusted for next year. Yeah, but right now the rule is when you pick it up, the clock starts. Yeah, even if you, and, and the argument that Jason makes, I think, is one hundred percent valid. If you want to take a little extra time, get up there earlier, start your routine, and then it doesn't. The whole point is having a static clock, like right now, the way it is. You can just not pick up your ball for a long time, yeah, and actually take longer, which is not the point yeah. of the shot clock rules is to keep things going, uh, and and so it will get addressed. They played under the same rules, and so they're not going to they're not going to very wildly right now. But and then but, yeah, Jason's the right point, in my opinion. The other point that Balma made was is he can actually wipe his ball on the ball return, and he's still okay. Mm -hmm. but if he picks it off the ball return he's not okay and he just wasn't like right. 100 percent understanding that part of it so we, we picked up on that clarification in wichita because i didn't know it until ryan was on the show <laughs> and they were using urethane so of course it takes a lot longer to get all the oil off the urethane balls and so in the first commercial break you know ryan and i talked and i said well just start wiping it off but don't pick it up and then you'll have 
plenty of time because obviously it doesn't take much time. But if you take 10 or 12 seconds to get all the oil off, it can get it can get close. And uh, I mean, and the so, other, I guess I guess the other way around it is, is while the other or just before, uh, you know, is to get up and pick your ball off the rack. Because if you sit with it, you've got <laughs> what, what, what theory, are you going to do? You didn't take it off the ball return. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in theory, it's, you know, it's already in your hands. So as soon as his ball's done, it's, it's got score, I guess. <laughs> that would be interesting. So, yeah. Uh, like everything else, you just keep trying to improve. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Kimberly, of all people, I'm sure she might have had a little help on this, but she did set me up on, on the uh, animal pattern thing. Uh, it was well played. It, it was. I, I I was speechless. I had nothing. Oh, I, I didn't see that. What happened? She she did. You know, she was asking everybody what what animal, and everybody went through the thing. And at the very end, I was there. And I said, I, I think I said eagle, or something like that. Whatever. And she goes, not not a dinosaur, not not a purple dinosaur pattern. And I went, oh, yeah. All right, well played. <laughs> yep so <laughs> uh, I hope you're practicing <laughs> uh, hey Mike I just want to let you know if we've got the house shot out my swings grew from the World Series for the house shot I bowled at 777 and 783 my two league nights this week so we're good to go Got got, got that house shot swing sorted uh, the the regional tournament it's it's kind of a regional. Uh, it's not an official PBA title, but it'll be run like a regional. It's at Chris Keen Center in Florida. Unfortunately, I don't know exactly where that's at. Yeah. So, uh, uh, Larry, great to see you, man. Larry was at uh, a a, uh, a Baker Barnes camp in. Tomball, Tomball, Texas, outside yeah, of Houston. Larry's a really nice guy. He's a super nice guy. Should have um, did looking nervous, and I i mean, who can blame him? Uh, but Shoda has been pretty – it's his second show. He made a show in Indianapolis. Shoda has been the best bowler in Japan for a minute, like about 10 years a minute. And I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about this a little bit. Mm -hmm. I don't think he actually looked nervous. I think he just looked uncomfortable. Yeah, and I think it's easy to confuse it to. You're probably right. I didn't like, get to see it, but I he's just, not a high nervous guy. I just opinion. felt like he didn't have a good like I describe this to Chris all the time. Like, and this is where like the misconception to me of the ball reps is I think that we as high level players get the most advantage from the ball reps when we're totally lost. And we need them to direct us to the better part of the lane. Mm -hmm. Like ball rep is the dumbest thing in the world as a phrase <laughs> because m almost nobody uses them to tell you which ball to use because every single player's arsenal is different. Like right. nobody is having the same progressions through their arsenal. So it's like for that guy to guess which ball you should be using is like, <laughs> like so unlikely. Like, because he doesn't know, like, me and Chris don't have the phase two in our arsenal in the same spot, or maybe not even in our arsenal, period. Right. Like, if I'm times using you DNA both had it out and we both had it in, and it, it might be three spots higher or lower for one of us. Exactly. So the ball ref isn't going to tell us, hey, un unless they're being an idiot, they're not going to say, hey, throw the phase two. Like, Unless they're with us and we've been doing it for like, like say the TV show and you know which balls, like we've had a conversation about this is the way I stack them. Like in the general. So there what is they a misnomer use, yeah, about how so, it works. So, so what they're really good for is to tell you, you need to be in this part of the lane. And with once you get that. Smoother way, shapes with angular shapes. Yeah. And then exactly. you do the rest. Exactly. And I think that when we feel our most comfortable. I liken it to, I could get a piece of 
paper and I could draw exactly where I think the friction is and where I think the oil is. Like in my mind, that's what I'm always trying to get to, to a point where I could go this right here, like draw a strong line at like yeah. 17. That's where I think the friction starts. And that's where I think the oil starts. And I think that's the key to finding the right part of the lane. Now, right. and they might go, the, hey, no, I think you're seeing it a little bit differently. I think it's really here. And exactly. Go, oh, well, okay. Maybe that's why I'm missing it. Yeah. And, and I no, felt like Sorry. Shota had a the best idea of where the oil was when he was bowling because Shota bowled the oil the whole time. Like mm -hmm. he never used the friction. Like when we were bowl, like when I watched him bowl, he right. started way left of everybody. Like, Kept and he just, he just closer to the head, man. yeah, he didn't like, cause you, you were playing almost second arrow, like on the fresh. Yeah. I was an arrow and a half right of him. Oh no. Show was, was at fifth arrow. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like yeah, he yeah. was like angling it dead at the pocket. Lots of rotation and just making his ball hit at the end. And and but, he was knocking the pins everywhere. Oh. Now, fast forward to last night, and I don't know whether it was just because the lanes have been broken down so much, but last night it looked like Timmy was talking to him, and Timmy felt like the best way for him to hit the pocket. And to be fair to Timmy, when he did what Timmy was saying, he struck every time almost. But it was a total change from how Shota had been bowling the lane. Like, he was shaping yeah. a little off the drive with a weaker ball. And I just don't think that Shota's brain ever could 100% determine where the dry was and where the oil was. He's not what he wanted to do. He's well, kind of what he got forced to do. Yeah, and I just think that he had such a good game plan and he felt so comfortable doing what he was doing the show forced him into doing something he didn't really want to do. So I don't think he was nervous. I just don't think he really knew if I throw it here, it's going to lay for the pocket. And if I throw it here, it's going to overbounce. So I'm going to mm -hmm. get it between those two. I don't think he ever really, especially on the right lane, he never really trusted it. And I don't think that's nerves. I think that's just like, I don't have a clue what's out there. And you, yeah, it's so difficult to be like Chris was and like Norm was, where when Chris was the best bowler in the world, you'd watch him and Norm, and the harder they were, the more they could convince themselves to throw a good shot. That that makes you a psychopath. Like <laughs> every normal human being, when you don't know what's there, your your brain immediately tries to help you. It's the nicest so, thing you've ever said to me. Yeah, but you, you and Norm, like specifically you and Norm, could just like get up and go, oh my God, this lane's awful. I better make the best shot of my life. And you would just do it. And it's just like, that's not normal. And <laughs> how Shota was is totally normal when you yeah. feel uncomfortable and you don't know. Your hand just gets, oh, I'll help it. And your brain knows that that's a bad idea. You just can't stop yourself doing it. Yeah. So... That's yeah. what I think happened. Uh, well, there nobody's banning your thing. That that whole point conversation. That's that's all dead. Uh, Pete Dohan, what's going on, Deuce? Every house pa pattern is different in every bowling center in my area. Sometimes some of those uh, in those ball reviews we see that. Uh, uh, some of them have a little bit of a hang spot right in front of the uh, three pin. Um, but yeah, I, the more. And you would think in Florida, actually, which is where Pete's at, uh, Pete's a great he, – he's a seven or eight-time regional champion, by the way. Uh, he, no small uh, no small beans there. Uh, you would think that close to Kegel, there would be a lot of kind of standard Kegel house shot patterns, but it's really not the case at all. You have some that are super long, kind of A-frame type patterns, and you have some, some really chirpy, shorter – uh, kind of overwalled top hat ones too. So it's a, uh, yeah, like you say, there's not really a typical house shot. I'm not sure there ever really has been, but there certainly doesn't seem to be now. Everybody's kind of gone further away, it seems, from the, the Kegel stereotype pattern than, than maybe before. And I don't really know why, but they just, you see more variants now than, than it did at one point, it seems. 
Uh, hey, Kevin. Um, what time am I bowling on the 10th? I don't know. But if you look at the schedule, I will be bowling whatever you think is the best time for singles and doubles on the 10th because we're in a big group. And Rich always gets the good squads. So if there's a squad at like two o'clock or something, probably two o'clock or er, two o'clock teams. You might be like eleven a.m. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, maybe. I'll I'll, I'll um I'll uh, find out and I'll post it because I don't know and I don't really have a way of knowing while we're on the show because I'm using my yeah. phone. Yeah. Um. But thanks. I I'll uh I'll, I'll post it on our socials and stuff. Um. Another live stream said layouts don't matter and reality is they only affect the way the ball goes through the pins, right, wrong, or it depends. Well, I would say it says only affects the way the ball goes through the pins. I think that's a pretty big difference <laughs> for one. Um, for two, I, I, I think if I understand this, this was coming from JR. And I think the point that he was making was... For the vast majority of guys, they don't throw it consistently enough that it makes that big of a difference. And having the same layout on multiple balls is more of a difference than having a different layout on the same ball, I think was the point he was making. And to some extent, I agree with him. Um, but I just think that the whole world wants to make sweeping statements, layouts don't matter, CG doesn't matter, this doesn't matter, that doesn't matter. Like, I get it, but it's like everybody goes, well, surface surface is the only thing that matters. Well, if I have a shiny reality and a dull plastic, the shiny reality is still going to hook more. I mean, it's extremes, but if I put the pin... On your axis, I guarantee you it's not going to roll as good as it does when it's above your ring finger. So to some extent, it all matters. Yeah. Some matters more than others, definitely. But I think I, it's and way an overreach to say they don't matter yeah. at all. And like, and the thing is, is for one guy, pin above the ring finger might be a nightmare. Because if they have a low yeah, track. I mean, for Fagan, that was a one-inch pin. <laughs> yeah, and and that's what I'm saying. So Mika, I think that it was it was five inch pin. I I think that as time has gone on, more knowledge has been gained, and I think that some of it has become paralysis by analysis. I I, I think some of it, like back in the day, you know, they had the one thirty clock drills and all the rest of it. And nobody really gave mm -hmm. a shit where you tracked and whatever. But I think as knowledge has been gained. I think that some of it has helped. And I think that some of it has made people think that really minute things make a difference to a guy who just wants to ball on a house shot. So, yeah. So the answer is always, it depends. Uh, Dan, of course, knows. Lehigh Lanes in Lehigh, Florida near Fort Myers. I don't know exactly the dates. Maybe he'll put that in there too. I just follow where they tell me to go. I know it's in between two stops. So <laughs> I, I don't I don't understand. Does that mean does that mean he thinks I'm gonna carry him? Yeah, he's under this confused notion. He he keeps trying to say Graham Fa is the reason why they keep winning all these terms that they're in. And I think I have a fair amount of evidence that that's not that's not actually how it's worked. Uh yeah, that was great. Yeah, super funny. Great, super. <laughs> in high school it was barney five so barney the dinosaur is not even really that you know it's not even that bad so um speed dominant player with high revs bowling more on sport patterns and regionals eternity pie or the harsh reality to read mid lane and back end um i think that the harsh reality is the safer bet from what I've seen. I yeah. think when the Eternity Pie is great, it's fantastic. But I don't always understand why it's not great all the time. I, I think it's it's actually a little more responsive. 
And by that, I mean, when there's friction in the front, it also hooks a little more in the front. And when there's oil down lane, it also skids a little bit more in the back than maybe you would like out of a ball that's that you're using as a pretty heavy oil ball. Uh, and so I'm seeing guys use it more lane shine and kind of letting it be more of a middle. So they're using it when it's kind of a, a bit more at their strength. I think the harsh reality is a heavier oil ball is the more consistent ball that you can count on through transition as well a little bit more. And that's where the harsh, I think is better than the pie. Yeah. I, th I, hundred percent. I think the eternity pie has a higher ceiling and a lower floor. Yeah, that's fair. Like, and which is sort of the same with all responsive balls, but yeah, because as a heavier oil ball, that it, it does, it makes it a little trickier because you're using it on oil. So as they break down, it's going to see the friction a little sooner. And as it carries down, you're going to see that a little quicker as well. Daniel says, if you bother to measure it, it matters. I guess he's talking <laughs> about the layout. Maybe yeah. he's talking about something else. Well, I'm not here to judge that. I I fooled one already. We're good. Uh, <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> says, um, he said, just click, mate. I get it. Yeah, <laughs> that was pretty much what it was. Uh, the thing thank is, you for the show. Looking YouTube. for GBA 50 in, in June. Thanks, 3Gs. Oh, that's good. You got some fans, Chris. Yeah, Colorado. I like that place. Highland Park Lanes is a great host. And there's a worse, there's that is a great place to be in the middle of June versus being in Texas when it's 112. Uh, so, Ari asked this question. Keep up the good work. Oh, ask the question. Yeah, thanks. Uh, also, up here, the C. Yeah, could someone please explain Clift? And it is exactly what you think it is. It's, it's what us dinosaurs used to call wet dry. Or, or short oil once upon a time. <laughs> Pretty much. I, this this is another this is another t shirt that I want. One man's clift is another man's walled. Yeah. Just depends on how low your rev rate is. <laughs> yes. Yes, he did call me a psychopath. And and in and as an endearing a way as possible. <laughs> and I took it as a complete I, just, I, 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 I could never understand how you did it. You you guys were just <laughs> Like no normal person can do that. Just go. Oh, these lanes are impossible. Just let go of it. Everybody, every other person's like, "Oh my god, I've got to make the best shot of my life." Please, please, please. <laughs> ah! <laughs> Fuck. Well, which I'm not is a psychopath? I'm not a psychopath anymore. How's that? I was about to say. <laughs> you, you you now do it, and you go, "Oh, that's why I beat these schmucks for so long." <laughs> Yeah, it doesn't work as well as it used to. <laughs> uh, I will be bowling the PBA 50. Fuck off! Uh, <laughs> Stu is only uh, a smooth uh, eight years away. Uh, I was going to say 11. So, but uh, yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, is there any chance people will show the spare stats on TV like they do with first balls? You mean with the rev rate and all that? If you mean that, they don't show that because Specto has this algorithm that it uses, but with spare balls, the spare balls will read like 700 RPM because of it doesn't slow down. And If, if you're talking about yeah. like the actual like percentages, they do show it. The problem is, is like is it's way harder to separate on the spare percentage than it is on the strike percentage. Like... Basically, everybody who spares okay is between like 90 and 95. And like every now and again, it's almost impossible to be more than 95 because washouts count and like the three, yeah. six, nine, tens count and like all of that sh shit. So, all it really means when it's above 95 is that you were probably using a urethane ball and you never missed the pocket. Yeah, you're shooting single pins. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, basically, yeah, the corner pins, the best guys. I mean, I guess Walter was 100% for a season, which is – is a. I thought that was only in match play. Because they were only – Well, it's only the ones they kept play. track of, yeah. But it was like 700 and something for 700 and something. It was it I was mean, a, a wild number. It was yeah, big. Yeah, Yes was the best single pin spare shooter right now. And it's not How's actually that? that close. 
by eight fact. years ago, he couldn't make one. Yeah. But or like you, I said, you, right now, the joke was 50 50. And now yeah. he, he's. I think he's he missed like him. three on the season or something. Yeah. So, Which, I mean, I think I've missed. 90. It's probably 98, 99% for the season. Oh, no. He's, he good. actually would statistically he would say he's 100%. <laughs> because he's missed so few that it would actually go back up to a hundred percent because it's out of the like it's ridiculous. Because of course he's he has to get three hundred of them for the season. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, stuffed. Yeah, yeah. Like I think last yeah. I, I'm terrible this season, <laughs> but mainly because of uh Wichita when I felt like they were moving and I changed the spare ball out, and then it was much better. Mm-hmm. Um, I wasn't very good at the World Series on spares. I think I missed two 10 pins. And that was the only thing I missed single pin wise, which is awful because I'd missed none since the players. Yeah. 10 pins. Um, I would say I'm a pretty good single pin spare shooter. I'm probably in the top consistently in the top five for the season, the last few years. And I missed somewhere between, I don't know, like eight and 15 for the season. Like the last few years. Like EJ is pretty good single pins. He's usually up there. Um, I think yeah. last year me and EJ were the best too, and we missed like, um, I think I think we missed twenty twenty two between us or something for the yeah. season out of about a thousand. Yeah, it turns out I think I find Lane talk great, and you should get that if you're interested in like what real spare spare percentages are, even for the top guys. Like the three six ten is not a ninety percent spare. It's Considerably, it's in the high 70s, I believe. Uh, you know, conversely, things like 2.8 and things like that are super, are over 90%. Uh, the washouts are way closer to 50%. Uh, you know, that kind of thing. So uh, that regional and strings is uh, May 16th, 18th at Lehigh Lanes. There we go. So if you're in the area, you want to see what it looks like with to have a competition on uh, certified strings, uh, that's where you can go. But I'll let you know what I think, too. Yes, I was thinking of the um, target. I, I, I think that this is the pro- that this is another thing that's all relative. Like, EJ could hit the same board at the same angle as I would but because I'm five boards wider than EJ and I'm being <laughs> generous, like I, I'm going to be in a different spot sliding. Yeah. Like it only shows lay down though. So in theory it's somewhat close, but some yeah. guys have more rotation and need more speed. Uh, Walter actually had his strength basically hit the thumb holes. His, his spare ball sometimes went slower than his strike ball. At one I point, mine kind of did too when my swing was, was a little better. Duke. Duke Duke could throw a spare ball slower than a strike ball and Almost it wouldn't have hooked time. the hundred foot lane. Yeah. So Dom is a big proponent of that. He th- feels like when he's super uncomfortable, it's generally he ends up throwing his spare ball harder than he should, and then he kind of yep. recalibrates and stops throwing it a hundred miles an hour and he's much better. Same. Um when I trust it, it I don't have to throw it very hard, but when I don't. They they have pace. <laughs> yeah. I mean, like I think that when when you're bowling well is always fun. It's like you can decide, okay, I won't bounce this 10 pin out because if I hit that side of it, it's gonna bounce out and that's kind of annoying. And then other times you've got like the prick following you and you're just like, nah, I'll just get him again. Yeah. Yeah, it, it there was a time when I I would literally move a half so I would stop bouncing them out in front of the rake so I could get them, you know. And now I, now I you just... Moving. Yeah, and times like you say, where you're like, eh, let him deal with it <laughs> yeah. and try and make it come out. Uh, where did 30 pins come from? This came from when we were bold multiple squads. And uh, so it was a way in match play for the scores to kind of normalize, I guess. And whoever bowled well at the end... Uh, you had it. It made it made it more exciting because more somebody could come from behind if they were bowling well and have a chance to make the show from further back. 
So some of it's entertainment, some of it was squat equity. Uh, a lot of it had a lot to, at one time it was 50. I asked Barry Asher this question because I didn't know the history of it. And he said at one point it was 50. Uh, that was too many. So I went to 30. And I could argue that maybe with our formats being a little shorter than they used to be, that 20 is probably a lot closer to the right number so that the bonus bins yeah. don't overwhelm uh, the actual scores attained you know, throughout uh, a, a format. At 42 games, 30 seemed to be fine. Uh, when we start getting down in the 20s and that, it seems like maybe that uh, 20, 20 pins or so uh, would be closer. And uh, In my youth tournament, for instance, that's what I do. I do 20 pins because we don't have as many games involved, and I don't want winning matches to be the only reason somebody wins a tournament. I actually would love it if we went. I think that the best version of the um, round robin is the 15 man round robin and the 24 man robin robin where you play two people each game yeah like but finding that spreadsheet for the schedule is kind of yeah odd do we have any mathematicians out there that can figure that out please send it to us we'd be happy to try that out i would love a 10 10 and or 15 and 15 you know it eliminates the bad beat because basically what you do is you do 30, 15, 0. Yeah. So you get 15 pins for every person you beat each game. And I think it would be an excellent format for regionals. Right. You can take because more people have, to the finals. You could have 15 people make the finals and it's only eight games. Right. Seven games to bowl everybody and then an eighth game for the position round. Right. And like, like I say, if you're bowling – pretty well you're going to be getting bonus every single game um but you're not going to be getting like pounded 30 losses you know 30 a time you're only losing 15 to the guy so i really like that format i felt like it rewarded people who bowled pretty well but it didn't like it didn't kill the guys who bowled well who picked the wrong guys mm -hmm. um so i enjoyed that one Anywho, I think we are um uh no, it doesn't, Charles. It, how could it, it it really couldn't? Um uh, what they've actually done with that though is um it doesn't count towards your total percentage if it's the fill shot of the tenth. It only counts towards so for example, you have a total percentage clean. Mm -hmm. And if you go strike, leave the 10 pin and then throw at like a strike shot, or if you miss it, it doesn't matter. That doesn't go on your total clean no. percentage, but it does go on your percentage at the 10 pin because they don't really have a way of taking that out. So like your individual mm -hmm. like spares that you go at, it counts on that, but it doesn't count um, because – for a while, people were like, well, I didn't miss that many spares. They must all be fill shots, but that doesn't count anymore in that in that total percentage. For, you, for your overall spare percentage, that doesn't count. So, Cool. All right. Should we get going? You can get back to the bowling center. Yeah. I've been kind of watching on the side here, but I couldn't do this from my kingpin. There's too many people in the, the Wi-Fi there, so. Go back watching the seating. They start match play tonight. Yeah, I think that would be cool if we could find a way to do that. I think that would be a better, a better option along, and it allow you to do some of the cut downs. You know where you can eliminate a group and still play everyone in that round without, you know, making yeah. It because too none of those things ever work when you'd like do the maths of like, um, hey you played this this many hmm. seeds like you know like i played the number one yeah three eight and Basically 12 odds and evens all the way through yeah yeah because it's just it never works because it always ends up being that like qualifying has nothing to do with the match play and like one half <laughs> of the, the odds and evens played. but but yeah you had to bowl ej simo and belmo and i you know i got to bowl and you didn't yeah it doesn't i, don't I, I missed all three of them and it doesn't yeah. matter who it is because they're not those three. 
So yeah, exactly. Or <laughs> you hit all of the lefties, and the and the finals are all dominated by the lefties. Yeah, yeah. Like there's there's a lot of things like that <laughs> that just like. Um. Yeah, that so, would be great. I'd love. We've been talking about that that round robin with with two with three guys on a pair and basically only two guys at a time. I love the idea of that. I just haven't found a just, crossing sheet that gets you on all the pairs and and bowls everybody. Yeah, and not fall and not bowl on the same pair back to back games. That's another yeah, problem. Some of the anomaly it. stuff. I mean, you're, the games aren't going to be completely even, but you get as close as you can where you're not bowling on one pair three times and no pair. Another pair, not at all. Or they use once. that. They use that format in Australia a lot. That's one of their favorites. Um, hmm. So they do it. But yeah. All right. Okay. Well, hey, thanks, thanks for guys. In, I appreciate guys. it. Uh, Toc up next, so uh, we will be bowling during our normal Tuesdays and Thursdays time slots next week, at least hopefully. Uh, yeah. And yeah. so. And then on to the I, Dodger tour for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you're uh, you're you're back on it. Yeah, we will uh, we will try and um, we will try and uh, get back on schedule a little bit um, this summer. I will uh, try to think about putting some more content together. Unfortunately, my lane guy got let go, so that made life a little tricky. Um, getting into the bowling center when it wasn't open and such. So got to wait and see how that plays out. I'm sure it will work out. It's just right. We had the perfect situation and now I don't. So, um, yeah. All right. Thanks guys. Uh, I mean, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get you updated on when we can kind of get going again, but, uh, looking forward to it. Uh, appreciate you guys again. Uh, missed being on here a little bit. So, uh, uh, until next time, uh, please support the sponsors that support us. Storm, Rotograph, Niner Global, Coolwick, Bullers Mart, Firelight Bowling Center, Lightning Strikes, and Platinum Four. Until next time, stay safe, stay healthy. God bless. See you later. Thanks, guys. <laughs>